Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today, at the beginning of a sparkling new year, I want to introduce you to a, a new um, colour in the Schmincke Aqua Bronze range. Now, these have been very popular um, and they come in five colours normally. They've just added a new colour. So I want to show you what's different with this colour. It's called Diamond Silver and compared to the silver, it has such so much more shimmer and shine. It really has got those lovely diamond facets that you get. So what I'm going to do is a quick little demonstration of a silver fish. Um, and then I can show you how really shiny this um, aqua bronze is. And as we're going along, I'll talk about aqua bronze if you've not heard of it anyway. Okay, so tape down my fish and I'm just going to keep it a real simple background. I'm going to do a bit of blue, which is French ultramarine I've picked up. Wash it on. I want it quite light. So I'm just wetting my brush. The papers, I'm, I think I'm using a Bockingford. So the paper's obviously resisting the water at the moment because I've not put enough on. That's just my, me. And then I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm going to mix on the page. I'm not overly concerned about where the colours are going. This is all um, going to work itself out. So again, I love watercolour for this reason. It just does. And a lot of it is you let it you have to step back and say, actually, let's see what happens. So mix those together, they make a lovely purple. Mix them on the page. Just going to make sure I'm going to the edges and there's some slightly different tonal values, a few areas of light and a few areas of dark. I'm just going to darken off here. Just, just around the fish just gives it a little bit more tonal depth and makes some part of the fish stands out a little bit more. Add some of that colour in. So very easy to do. I've not thought about where I'm putting the colour, not worried about where it's gone. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for this stage, except I need to um, use my hairdryer. So why don't you join us in um, a minute and we'll take a short break. I can do the hair drying and then we can get on and it will be a little bit longer than we normally have because usually I break halfway through. But I think this is just um, an opportunity to have a break now and then I can get on and we can talk about the diamond silver. So join me in a minute. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland, a devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines. It's be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. I'm just having to tape down the edges because um, the paper's starting to curl a bit and Gary doesn't like that when he's filming. It says it creates shadows. So just taping the paper down at the edges. So I wanted a really bone dry um, finish because um, I'm going to be using a pen on top. 
And you notice if I tested it, I mean, you can wave your hands over and if it feels cold, it's still a bit damp or I'm using the back of my fingers. I'm not putting my um, fingers on. There's le little less grease on the back and it, it just stops you getting fingerprints on. Um, okay, I've just been told someone's watching in America at 5 a.m. Well, that is dedication to you. So thank you for that. And let's get on with this fish. So I'm doing a silver fish, but like anything that catches the light, it's going to catch colors as well, which is why all the colors are harmonized in the first wash. And you can see here how it's dried. It dries differently to how it looked. And this is where you have to be a little bit patient and just trust in your materials. So I'm going to be using a Micron um, archival ink pen. These are great for its permanence, so it doesn't move when you put a, a wash on top of. So you can use it two ways. You can either put it down first and then put a wash on top, or as I'm doing, I've put the wash on first, and then I'm just going to um, fill in the details. I'm really enjoying this kind of work, this pen and wash kind of work. Um, and I try different pens. This time I'm using a size eight, because I want to be a bit quicker. Um, but it goes right down to that really tiny 0 05, which is lovely for detail. But I want to get on with this and you don't want to just keep watching me doing lots of lines. So I'm going to work quite quickly with a slightly thicker pen. And again, I'm not going to create solid lines. I think with anything, if you can create it and make it look sketchy or that every line is there for a reason. I think it just adds a little bit more character and texture. I keep talking about texture, but without texture, you do notice um, how it, it doesn't, it just looks too plain, too solid. Cartoons don't always have a huge amount of texture. They're very solid line um, and solid colors. That's a style, There's nothing wrong with that. But in a sketch, you often are looking for a little bit more texture. And you can see there, broken line. I don't need to do a solid line. The eye will, you know, tell you that it's a fish and that it, it is a solid unit. So I'm going to just pick up on the fin. And this is quite delicate. It's got delicate lines. So again, I'm just using the edge of this nib um, just to give me some finer detail. So you can see how I can vary the line, just by pressure, with using just one pen. Right, I'm going to try and follow the scales that might get lost. I put them down initially, but what I like is some of these lovely shapes and how the shapes vary. Oh, I think I've lost it there a little bit, never mind. Again, I'm using the um, image as reference. People don't see exactly the image you're using as long as it gives what you're trying to achieve. So here I'm trying to achieve scales and they're varying in texture and shape a little bit. As I go further down the belly, they're a little bit more flattened against the body, whereas these ones at the top have that very distinctive kite-like shape, I'm not sure what it is. And yes, I've got lines down on the page, but I'm finding I'm not actually using them. They were used as reference guides. As much as I'm trying to, I can't see them very well. Not a big deal. As long as you get the shape um, that you're looking for. I can see some, so I'm using those as my guides and I know that they're going to be fairly consistent. Okay. Well, that was quite quick. So now, because it's a pen and wash, I'm actually going to start build up a little bit of the darker shadows using again this pen. So at the top here, the scales, I've missed the scale there, so I'll put one in are quite distinctive and have quite dark shadows around. I chose this image 
because I do like the the light and the dark makes it much easier if it's already done for you so I'm filling out the dark areas this is why I needed the um, thicker pen because it just gets it down a lot quicker there you go so I'm going to and again I might just add mainly because I'm getting a bit bored with covering a lot of the black in so if I feel I've missed the scale I can just put one in as long as you've got a fairly consistent pattern it works so even now I'm altering the drawing as I'm looking at it and it's starting to come together I'm thinking yeah it needs a little bit more there that shape doesn't work how can I put another shape in is that too dark and it's just constant you're always just adapting and manipulating your drawing so I often have no vision about how things turn out. I will do when I'm doing something for you because I've obviously tried it beforehand, sometimes, not always. But they will, they will turn out very differently anyway. So each time I do something, even if it's the same subject, the same medium, it turns out differently. And it's always a surprise and you're always learning from what you're doing, which is why practice is a really great tool. It's one of the best tools an artist can have is practice. Because then you have a, a little bit more control over your medium. And you know pretty much it's going to work for you. Even though sometimes it surprises you and doesn't. Okay. So let's work back in here. Now the, the fish is quite dark on the top here, so I'm actually going to use that. If I had, this only goes up to a 0.8, um, so it's going to take a while to fill in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use cross hatching to keep some texture in the um, drawing. So although this is a solid black, on the photograph, I'm just going to suggest the shadow by cross hatching. I don't need to fill it all out as a solid unit. Do you mind your left hand, please? Sorry, I was you. leaning. Sorry. <laughs> and I like to change so you've got some nice solid areas here compared to some of this cross hatching here and again I could I'm just looking at some of the shadow because I'm not going to go back in to this with colour it's going to now be the the dark pen that I put on will bring it to life so very dark eye it has got a glimmer of light so I'll keep that this is probably going to be one of the darkest points or the most solid Take that down a little bit better and then looking round, seeing where the shadows are and they're around the eye. Again, just using lines, dots, dashes, just helps to bring the detail together. So this shadow here, so I'm just going to put a little bit on there, a few dots, dashes, and I think that all just adds to the texture. Very light touch, you can feel it scrape across the paper. And this is, I'm using a watercolour paper, mainly because I used watercolour in the first instance, but I also like the texture you get when you use a pen. It skips, you, you can feel it skipping across the surface, so here, is not as dark so I'll start to cross hatch and I think that's starting to give some really nice texture on 
what would be a very soft, shiny surface, smooth, I think you can still add texture without taking away from the surface because it's how you finish it will give you that lovely texture, lovely surface shine. Plus, you, mine's all ready going, it's a fish. It's got that flat surface. So here, just pick up some of the shadow underneath so it's not as white. What I'm looking for is my whitest whites. Where is the light? Um, it's not here. That's got to t be taken down a tad. There is catching the light, so I'm keeping that clear. There's a shadow under here. This is quite a light area. Maybe add a bit more texture in. But I don't want to overdo it. I want to, you know, have contrasts. This is darker. And the fish is quite round here, so I'm trying to give a curve line. Just gives that shape. Again, dosh, dashes and dots. Um, these are quite light. I don't want to fill in too much dark. So I'm getting to a very sketchy stage now. So watercolour and line, you, there's lots of different ways. You can do it very precisely, very neatly, and then just use the colour to add. I actually like a sketchy feel. That's me. I just feel it just adds, and it works brilliantly with a pen and wash study. People watching are liking the, the pen work. It's very, I'm just skipping with it. I'm not doing every line. I've seen people work very slowly, very detailed, and I admire that because I, I can't do it. I must admit I've skipped on a bit, but I like a sketchy feel. I just like a drawing is a drawing, so show the characteristics of the pen, the movement. So dots and dashes, let's bring out some. Okay. This area here just needs a little bit of work. I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow onto the... Now, if I thought about it, I probably would have been a bit more careful with that. But I know what's going to happen at the end anyway. I'm going to use the Aqua Bronze. So that does tend to be quite covering, depending on how I use it, and I will explain this. So let's just add some shadow a bit more the light I can't always see with the light I can't always see the um, tonal values so often it's a surprise when I walk out of the um, studio and I look at it again and go wow that was quite bright so I can't always see what you're seeing because the light is making it very flat okay see north on that and yes there's probably areas I could work on but I want to show you the um, aqua bronze so this is the new diamond silver they've got uh, pale gold rich gold pale rich gold silver and a copper so they're the five colors made from metallic pigments which is why it's heavy and what you can do is you can drop them onto a wet paint. So if this watercolour was wet, you just sprinkle it on and they shimmer and move across the surface. It has to be wet because you need some adhesive properties. So watercolour has gum arabic in it, it will stick to that. If it's dry, it does say mix with watercolour, with water, sorry. That's absolutely fine. What I have found is, it is if I just mix this with water and then put it on, it tends to dust off. So that's easily solved. Oh, this is quite full. I'm going to get it everywhere, Gary. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'll probably have it in my face, as always. So I'm just putting a little bit into the palette. You actually don't need much. And I don't know if you can see there how much sparkle there is already. So that's nice. I'm going to add gum arabic. Now, I've used gum arabic in many other ways. But for me, it is quite an essential um, tool when using watercolour because there's so many uses for it. I'm going to just clean my 
painting knife because I don't want to contaminate it. Drop some onto the powder. So the bronzes are all powders in the aqua range. There are other ranges as an acrylic range and oils, but the aqua range is the powder range and it's really popular. And I can't see any reason why you couldn't sprinkle it onto an acrylic as long as it was wet. The same with um, an oil, as long as it's wet. Um, or mix it with an acrylic binder, or it, it's just a powder. So as long as you've mixed it with the right binder and using it with the right medium, it should be okay. So that's really lovely um, consistency. Uh, it's got gum arabic in it, which is why I use gum arabic. It's water soluble, so I can use water to dilute, but it's still going to give me that adhesive properties, which I lose if I just use water. So now, I mean, it's difficult without comparing it to the silver, but it really does have that extra diamond glimmer. It's really nice. I'm just going to put it and highlight some of these scales and I, I can see it. I'm not sure if you can, but how that's really picking up some of the shine. Can you see that, Gary? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. You can show us the finished one. Yeah, when I'll tilt it at the end, but uh, from my angle, it's going on and there's a wonderful shine to it. Just diluting, because I don't want to um, have it the same strength and consistency throughout. I want to again change it a little bit because I want to allow some of that lovely colour I put down initially to shimmer through. Okay, just going to add a bit of sparkle around. Again, I'm not overly worried about where I'm putting it because I've done the work with the pen. I'm just don't want to cover everything. I want to just let it have a hint of the shimmer. And I don't want to cover some of the lines I've done. It just, it's a waste of me doing them if I'm going to cover them. And that's looking nice. So, because now this is quite diluted, just adding water. The gum arabic is still going to make it adhesive enough, but the water just allows me to have it a little bit more transparent. Again, I'm not going to do them all. I don't want to just keep, this was quite controlled, fairly controlled. Now I'm just going to add a few areas. I don't want to cover the whole fish again with the silver because it's where it's catching some of the silver. So if I stand back, just see, that's, that's actually probably done. I don't need to do much more. So let's see if I can do, do it from this one first. If not, I have a piece I tried. And again, this is why I put the tape round because it's the reveal, which is the fun bit. Look at that lovely line. I know if you're going to frame it, you lose that, but I think the satisfaction of pulling the tape away and just revealing that lovely finish piece um, is, is just the bonus at the end. Okay. The last piece. So hopefully, I don't rip the paper. Look at the lovely granulation the French Ultramarine has made. It just adds to the character. Doing it slowly, which is unusual for me, at an angle. Yay! Just one, one last little bit. Is that going to get me? Yes. So that reveal at the end, it just kind of, you just kind of go, oh, that looks good. Let's just see if I can use this. Is that okay to use this one, Gary? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you keep putting it back in the, the same place, place, yeah. Because um, he's framed up, and if I move it, it's going to be out of frame. So, can you see? Oh, yeah, there we go. 
there you go. A bit more forward. There you go. Yeah, right. And you can see I've put it in some areas. And how easy, that actually really was quite easy. Um, it's the pen work has made it stand out. And the, the little flurries of the silver and the colour, I think that just makes it really fun. So the new colour, the new diamond silver, I think is a really great addition to the uh, Schmincke bronze range. So I hope you enjoyed that. Have a go, get out your materials for this new year and challenge yourself to do a little bit of date. Doesn't have to be a finished piece, just a little bit. Practice, practice. There's things you're not going to like. Don't throw them away. Put them behind at the back of the folder. Forget about them. Bring them out months later and you'll go, oh, actually, that bit worked really well. Everything is learning. I'm constantly learning. Even though I've been doing this for years, I'm still learning, even with um, mediums I'm familiar with. So um, let's have a let's challenge yourself for this year and just have a go and make it fun. So join me later in the week for another live demonstration.